Good Thursday morning to you, my friends. Glad to have you here. And uh, if you will get your Bible, let's go back to the 127th Psalm, Psalm 127. And we'll be looking at verses 3, 4, and 5 today. Psalm 127, verse 3. And this, for me, I don't know, it just seems a little um, unique, a little, a little different in its placement. Uh, again, the first two verses uh, that we looked at uh, dealt with building your house um, on the Lord and on his teachings. And then I guess it does follow to some degree uh, in verse 3, um, it moves on to talk about um, children and um, and that uh, having children is a gift uh, from God. And um, just seems like it ought to be, be a different psalm to me. Um, but uh, I'll trust God that he did what, he, what needed to be done here. Um, but uh, again, it's a real straightforward statement. Again, um, as we look at it, uh, lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. And um, so after talking about building your home, uh, building your life on the principles uh, and the truths of God's word, uh, he goes on and talks about having um, having children, having a family, that they are uh, a gift uh, from God, uh, that they, uh, again, that uh, he says they're a heritage. And so the idea, again, is that um, to carry on the name, an inheritance, um, that uh, they would be able to uh, carry on uh, the uh, the family name, and as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, uh, children of the youth. And uh, so it's an interesting analogy uh, here, illustration of uh, the blessing uh, of the ways uh, that children can bless their parents. One of them um, is like, the, like an arrow uh, in the hand of a soldier. Um, and so he's um, saying that children, um, when, um, when, when we have our children, um, and uh, so the children of thy youth, uh, when we have our children um, young, um, that, they will, uh, that they will grow up and they will be able uh, to be a, uh, an assistance uh, be able to help uh, be part of the parents' lives for many years. And it reminds me of something that I heard uh, Mark Gunger. Uh, Mark Gunger, Mark is a, a preacher up in Wisconsin, does a lot of marriage conferences and things. And I heard him talking about that one time. And he said, you know, everybody tells uh, young people that they should wait uh, to get married, wait till they're ready. And he says, if they're not ready, whose fault is that? He's um, said that's you know we we've had them for eighteen years we should have been getting them ready, um, and he goes on and expounds. Some people may disagree with that, but I thought what he said made a lot of sense. Um, he said you know if they're ready you know if we teach them and train them as they're young and they're ready to get married at an early age, then they're more likely uh, to have children themselves early which means that those children will have the benefit of not only um, their parents, uh, but the wisdom of uh, their, uh, their grandparents. And so there's advantage 
to that. Now, I, I know there will be some who would disagree with that, uh, but that's kind of what um, he's saying here when he says that uh, as an arrow in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth, uh, that our children, uh, if we have them uh, early in our life, uh, they are uh, able to be like an arrow, an arrow in the hand of a soldier is a weapon, is a tool, um, and that uh, they're able uh, to be an, uh, an, a, a help uh, to uh, their parents. Um, and then he says, happy is that man uh, who has uh, many children, um, that he's blessed um, as uh, he has as a sign of uh, the blessing uh, of God. Uh, that uh, they'll not be ashamed, but they'll speak with the enemies uh, at the gate. Um, and what he's talking about here, again, would have been relevant for them uh, because the business, people did their business uh, at the gates uh, of the city. Uh, they would go out to the gate and they would conduct all their business. They would settle their uh, arguments. Um, and he's saying that uh, children will uh, be there to support their their parents uh, in those uh, kinds uh, of matters uh, by helping them when they have uh, difficulty. And so it's uh, kind of a, to me a little bit of an interesting three verses after uh, the first verses talk about the Lord building the house and. Um, and, and I can see where I, to, I realize there is a connection, but it's just a little bit of a, uh, again, to me, um, you know, it, what, it wouldn't be the natural step I would expect uh, to take place. Uh, but again, God is simply saying, the, I guess, the, uh, the natural outflow of a godly home uh, then is that home uh, uh, reproduces. Uh, and grows, develops more, uh, more children who follow uh, God, who have children who uh, themselves uh, follow God. And uh, again, as part of that whole idea of having a godly home um, is, in particular in our world today, um, is the idea of, of parents um, being godly parents. Again, we, we live in a world uh, today uh, where um, it's hard to tell the number of children that are um, abandoned, uh, the number of children that are aborted, uh, the number of children that are abused. Um, and so the contrast to that is what uh, God teaches in this psalm is that children should be a blessing to us um, and uh, should uh, that parents have a responsibility to those children to uh, to treat them like arrows uh, that um, that are, are tools or are, uh, that we're aiming them in the right direction and training them uh, that they go uh, in the right direction. Uh, path, but most importantly, I think what this passage teaches, um, along with other scripture, uh, is the importance of again. Um, uh, it doesn't specifically say it, uh, but again, um, how else can a child be an arrow in the hand of a soldier? How else can the parent be happy uh, if he has a lot of them? Um, unless those children have been brought up and raised uh, in the in the fear uh, and the admonition of the Lord, raised up to uh, to serve uh, the Lord and and honor Him, and um, so uh, this morning just um, it's kind of again a little bit of a to me a little bit of a unique psalm to combine these two thoughts together. Uh, again, both of the thoughts of this psalm are biblical uh, that are taught throughout Scripture, but to see them together in that psalm and, uh, and get us to think about the whole package uh, of our home, our, a godly home uh, that's built on the principles of God's Word that brings up 
um, godly children, leading to godly uh, grandchildren, um, is uh, a concept that um, really needs uh, to be stressed, I think, in our society today and taught uh, to our children. And uh, what I'd like to do with this thought this morning is, um, is I'd like to leave you with a challenge um, and a thought to, uh, to pray for our young people, to remember the, the children. They, they live in a totally different world than most of us. They're faced with challenges and problems that we didn't deal with. Uh, and rather than condemn them and, uh, and, and trash them, uh, let's remember that handled correctly, uh, they are like arrows in the hands of a soldier. Uh, they're very, they can be uh, pointed and aimed uh, in the right direction. And pray for parents uh, as well. They, they have a real uh, struggle on their hands raising kids in today's world. So uh, a little, maybe a little different uh, approach than we usually take, uh, but just to leave you with that prayer challenge. So take a moment today and pray for um, your family, your children, for children, young people in general, uh, and the world that they're dealing with that most of us have uh, no concept of. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.